<clears throat> Good morning, everybody, or I guess hello. You might not be watching this in the morning. So hello, everybody. Appalachian Naturalist here with another bug video. So we're going to continue what we did the other day. Uh, we're going to work on this longhorn beetle here that has been in the rehydration chamber for yeah, a couple of days. It's nice and pliable, so I can work with them now. So we're going to pull them out. Notice color faded. That always happens when you throw them in ethanol. Color always fades. So, or tends to fade, I should say. So, it's nice and pliable. We can actually manipulate the bug now, see? I can move parts around, which is good. So, I'm going to grab them. Come here. So if we look at the bug like this, at this stage, doesn't matter whoops, what kind of a bug it is, it's got a left and a right side. And if we point the bug away from us, that tells us our left and our right side. So right now he's facing away from us. He has a left and a right side. We want the left side, let me use this, to be, this is very difficult to like, <laughs> do through the viewfinder of the camera. Here, let me try a more comfortable angle here. There we go. So this left side here, we want this to be as immaculate as possible. So we can totally trash your right side if we, we have to. Um, try not to, but if that's what happens, that's what happens. So, what we're going to do is we're going to put a pin <clears throat> through the right side, right there, Usually pins go on the right side of our beetle. And we're going to do that. So, give me one second. I'm going to try and uh, get the pin to be as perpendicular to the body as possible. That was not very good. As perpendicular to the body as possible. And both planes. And there's my turtle jumping off the rock again in the aquarium. Every time he does that, I jump. There. Alright. So, see, whoops. There we go. See how the pin is as perpendicular as possible to the overall body of the bug? And turn, and it's not exactly perpendicular this way. I could have rotated the bug a little bit to get something a little better, but that's good for now. So what we're going to do is something that I didn't do for the polyphemus moth. I'm going to go ahead and space the bug first. That way it dries that way. And we don't have the breaking off leg problem that we had before. So we're simply going to use our spacing block the biggest one here and we're going to space the bug all you do is you push down gently on the pin there we go done so there now when we put the labels on there it will actually be evenly spaced one label will be about there and the second label will be a little higher about there so, we'll get that out of the way. Next, it's time to adjust our pinning board. So, let me see here. Let's just kind of eyeball it. Sometimes it's difficult to get that pin all the way down there. So, we can actually close this a little bit. So, the adjustable, I like the adjustable one because you can adjust pinning board for the bug that you're working on. So let's close that just a touch. There we go. Tighten that back up. Maybe, unless that's stripped out. I think that's stripped out. Alright. So let's find a better... Let's see, a better spot. You guys see from there? Looks like you can. 
There we go. Alright, and that's not exactly where I want it, but it'll work for now. So, <clears throat> some of the tools that I use, I use a wide pair of tweezers like this. And a much narrower pair of tweezers. But a lot of time I end up using these uh, angled uh, teasers for my dissection set for the bugs. It works very well. I got a straight and a straight and a curved one there. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do, and this is difficult with a camera in my face, so I'm going to try and like reach around the camera, I guess. What we want to do is want to kind of tuck the feet up underneath the body a little bit. Firstly, you want to straighten the bug out, Kevin. There you go. Okay. So, we actually want to pull it up just a touch. So, since he's got nice big antennae, I want his head to be about the same level as the pinning board here. So, I want to kind of tuck his feet up underneath his body in a way that looks natural. They kind of already are, but here, that one needs to go back a little touch. All right. Now what we'll do is we'll pin not just his legs in place, but we'll pin the body in place as well. So we'll use the pins to manipulate the legs. And we'll start, always start lower on the bug and work up towards the top of the bug. That way, well, you pin in layers. The legs are lower than the wings, in some cases lower than the antennae, so pin the legs first. Then move up to the wings or to the antennae. There we go. I use about one pin. Uh, every leg. Just enough to hold them in place is really all you need. There we go. Beautiful. Alright, <clears throat> so now it's time to do something about those antennae. So, I want this to look pretty neat. So what we're going to do is, now that he's been soaking in that rehydration chamber, I can easily manipulate his antennae, which I couldn't do earlier. So, because guess what? He was dried out. All right, so what we'll do is we'll hold that antenna, the right antennae in place, and we'll put a pin right about there. So these antennae, you can't really tell with this camera. But if I had a better camera for my uh, light dissection microscope, I could actually show you. These antennae are segmented. So I got a bunch of little segments that are that are uh, jointed together with kind of like little joints if you want to think of them that way. There's one there, there's one there, there's another there, there, there. The entire length. So. What we're going to do is we're going to try and get them to bend along those joints. And we're going to try and get them equal on both sides. So this can be a little time consuming. But it's totally worth it once you, once you get it. Okay. Now see how this antenna wants to flop up. It doesn't want to stay down. So here's what I do. I hold it about where I want it, and then I put a pin at an angle. There. And now that angle on that pin will hold the antennae down. It'll dry that way, and it'll stay that way. Kind of like a, I don't know, I keep saying like a bug action figure. I don't know why. But, uh, yeah, kind of like a, like an action figure, I guess. It'll hold, hold its pose. There we go. See? Alright. Now we decide what angle we want the rest of this. Hmm. Yeah, that looks pretty good. 
Maybe a little longer, huh? Maybe something more like that. Alright. That's one reason I really like the uh, the curved teaser, because I can use it to actually pin or hold a body part down while I'm pinning it. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's do a little bit. Let's move up one joint. There we go. Now. What we'll do is we'll take this one from a different angle. There. Sometimes you have to do temp yeah, temporary pins. So, kind of like what I did there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to eventually move this pin here. Because it's just temporarily holding that antennae down. If you've ever had a chance to go behind the scenes at Natural History Museum and look at a bug collection, there's all kinds of cool stuff. And that's where that's where the neat stuff is, in my opinion, is behind the scenes. They only pull the big showy stuff out for the public to see. <clears throat> but uh, get a chance, see if you can get a behind the scenes tour of your local Natural History Museum, and you'd be amazed if it has entomology collection, just how many um, bugs they have. And each one is usually painstakingly pinned. Um, just just for that collection. So it's a tremendous time, uh, tremendous time sink, or time investment, I should say. Tremendous time investment to put together an entomology collection. And then you have to curate it. You have to keep little bugs out of it that would actually burrow into the bigger bug and eat out what's left on the insides and destroy the specimens. And so, I mean, it takes time and, and energy and money to, to work on a bug collection. You don't have to be rich to afford one. I mean, I first started 17 years ago, believe it or not, when the the periodic cicadas came through, not uh, not this past or two summers ago, but 17 years before that. And if you're from the eastern United States, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not, we've got these cicadas that every 17 years you have a generation. They turn into adults, basically hatch, and... Uh, they're kind of like a little plague. I've heard them uh, described as a plague. They're everywhere, and they 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 slice little uh, notches in uh, the trees and lay their eggs there. And then eventually, the eggs eggs develop, and fall down to the ground. That's the next generation of periodic cicadas. Um, if you're not from the eastern United States, you might not have those. You probably don't. <clears throat> but, um... So, when I first started pinning, I had a piece of cardboard and... <laughs> thumbtacks. Because I'd seen pinned bugs at the uh, Natural History Museum and I wanted to pin some of these bugs because I'd never seen them before. Now, I forget how old I was back then and I'm not going to do the math to find out. So, see that that doesn't seem too symmetrical. Is it? it's, it's coming out too straight here. So what we'll do is we'll try again. Or we will just bend this joint a little bit. Right there. There we go. So these longhorn beetles, the biggest time expense is just uh, or investment. The biggest time investment here is 
making the antennae symmetrical. Hmm. I wanted to do a short video for you guys today. Kind of picked the wrong bug for that. Oh well. You guys are just going to have to suffer through it, I guess. Or you can shut the video off. I mean, you don't really have to watch it all the way through. All right. All right. We're getting somewhere now. Yeah, it looked pretty symmetrical to you. What's interesting is this digit through here is a little thicker than this digit through here. So that throws the, the look off a little bit. Whoops, we got two pins there. There we go. Whoops. Uh-oh. Don't worry, I got it. There. Now that was just like a game of pickup sticks there. There. I guess technically I bumped that one so I would have lost. Oh well. I haven't played that game a long time. I don't exactly remember the rules. Alright, so in a nutshell, that's it. Uh, let me look at it from the top. Yeah, that's pretty good. This joint can be bent a little bit more, but that's not bad. So, that's it for pinning a Longhorn Beetle. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to move everybody to the side. And don't worry, I get labels and data for this guy on my uh, push pin board here, so I'm not losing any information there. I'm going to open up that rehydration chamber I showed you how to build in the Polyphemus moth video. And what we're going to do is we're going to work on a bug that I pinned a very long time ago. Mm. Like five years ago now. This guy right here. It's another longhorn beetle. But I was didn't do a very good job because I had basically a pizza box box and some thumbtacks I stole from the office. I didn't have any of my pinning stuff with it. See how the antennae are really wonky? So what we're going to do is we're going to stick this guy in here in a way it doesn't damage the antennae. There we go. And we're going to seal them back up. Second verse, same as the first, a little louder, a little worse. So this closed environment, the bug is drier then the moisture in the container, it's a closed system, so the moisture will diffuse into the bug and make it pliable again so that you can pin it just like we did with that beetle over there. Hey, we'll leave them in there for a couple days. And there's the data from my bulletin board. Ta-da. Right there, so there's no mistaking. That's the only beetle of that species that I have, so I'm not going to mess that up anyway. So, there you go. That's how to pin a beetle with long antennae. So, uh, it's getting kind of late in the season for collecting bugs, but, uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Put some comments down below, like, dislike, whatever. Um, tell me if you want to see more videos like this, uh, pinning butterflies and moths and I don't know what all I have to pin still. I gotta get through those jars. Um, so maybe we'll do a real simple one next time. Like an invasive stink bug or something. Um, even if you guys don't want to see stuff like this. Tell me. So feedback is, is important. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I think that's it. So until next time. Go pin yourself some bugs.